you make that wife look good. <laughs> now we will have our opening greetings. First, please give a warm welcome to the visionary leader of this great institution, the 10th president of the unsinkable and indestructible Albany State University, Dr. Marion Ross Fetcher. Please bring, give her a hand. theme song. We're going to play it after the ceremony as well, okay? <laughs> so hello everyone. You all, I hope you see yourselves the way we see you from the stage. Um, every time I come, you know, we have these nice sets of, of talking points, and then I look at you all and I just lose it completely, um, thinking about how great, how awesome, how phenomenal you already are. And then I think about where you're going to be in a couple of years, and a couple of years from that, and a couple of years from, from that how you all are going to take care of me when I'm really, really old. Um, I think about that. I think about seeing you all in the space that you're in right now and know that this is only the beginning for what you are going to be. So again, as Dr. Burgess said, please give yourselves a round of applause because you deserve it. I'm going to say a front thank you to our awesome alumni speaker, Dr. Sean Harper. He is phenomenal, a national leader. I encourage you to Google him to find out who he is if you have that already. But if you would all state you already know who he is. So this ceremony serves as the beginning of many opportunities for all of you. When you think about the hallowed grounds that you're standing on, and when you think about the history of Albany State University, you will know that you're standing on the shoulders of some phenomenal ancestors and that you are the legacy for what comes next. You're building on what they have already started. And so someone said earlier, so every time you do something at Albany State University, please know that you are always represented at Albany State University. That every decision you make, every idea you have, every thought you're thinking is rooted here at Albany State University. We want you to be phenomenal, fabulous. We want you to go out and be the historians that we know you're gonna be as you continue to build on what we've already brought at Albany State University. So we choose some of the top, the top students. Audience, this is one of the largest freshman class, classes that we've ever had. 1,400 plus freshmen. Our <laughs> right, teachers. So we choose some of the top students. We choose students that actually think that they are not at the top, but you really are. We choose students because we know that we can make them feel like they belong at Albany State University. So I want each of you, that you're going through the next couple of days, and we all know we're going to be in class on Monday, right? We're going to be in class on Monday, right? You have to learn how to do some calling back. Y'all going to be in class on Monday because we're going to wake you up and make sure you go. So you're going to be in class. But when you go, when we have... Um, Mr. Graham did the, his prayer. Thank you for that. I really hope you give me a copy of that. Before you get out of bed on Monday, I want you all to give thanks for being at Albany State University. Doesn't have to be a prayer, doesn't have to be a saying. Be thankful for being at Albany State University. And so this year, this academic year, because it's going to be a pretty phenomenal academic year, I promised myself that before my feet touch the ground, that I'm going to thank God for having me here for being a visionary, for knowing that I need to understand who all of you are, although we don't know yet, y'all are gonna teach us this year. I wanna be thankful every morning that I get the opportunity to open my eyes. This opportunity to go to college, a lot of your friends are not here, a lot of your relatives never got the opportunity to get here, but you all do. And so I want you to join me in every day, I want you to get up and just, for me, right, pray for me, pray for our administration, Pray for our faculty and staff, pray for our alumni, and the words of our former and our first and our wonderful first madam, she tells us to rise up. Rise up every time. When you can't go to class, rise up and go to class. When you can't do that exam, rise up and do that exam. When you think you can't go another step, rise up and go ahead and take that next step. I guarantee you, we will be here and we will be here to help you. And so when you think about who got your back, all of us do, we got your back but we need you to have ours as well. So be thankful for yourselves, for what you've already accomplished. You finished high school. Now it's just not time for the next phase. Time for the next phase. 
You ever hear us tell you that we love you? We really, really do. We probably shouldn't care as much as we do, but that's not going to change. You are a ram, and that is what this whole ramily is about. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, family, faculty, and staff for being here. And Rams, go Rams. Thank you, President Bedry. It is my pleasure to welcome your SGA president for 2023-2024, Ms. Hamadi Patel, as she introduces our keynote speaker for the afternoon, Dr. Sean Harper, ASU class of 1998, proud member of Kappa Alpha Psi. It is my honor as your SGA president to introduce a proud alumni of the unsinkable Albany State University, Dr. Sean Harper. Um, Sean Harper is a Thomasville, Georgia native and a 1998 graduate of Albany State University. He got his bachelor's in education. He served as the 1997-98 AASU Student Government Association president and Paul March of the Delta Z chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi. He went on to earn a PhD from Indiana University. Dr. Harper, Dr. Harper has since become one of the nation's most highly respected racial equity experts. He is a provost professor in the Rochester School of Education and the Marshall School of Business at the University of Southern California. He also is the Clifford and Betty Ellen Chair in Urban Leadership, Founder and Executive Director of the USC Race and Equity Center, and a pro base, um, I'm sorry, and the pro base of Contributor. He served as the 2020-21 American Educational Research Association President and the 2016-17 and 17 Association for the Student of Higher Education President. He was inducted into the National Academy of Education in 2021. Dr. Harper's research is focused primarily on race, gender, and other dimensions of equity in K-12 schools, colleges, universities, and corporations. He has published 12 books and over 100 other academic publications. His research has been cited in more than 19,000 published studies across various academic fields and disciplines. Atlantic Flinters and the Bill and Melinda, sorry, Melinda Gates alumni for Kellogg College, College Futures, Christy Sloan, and Open Society have awarded him the $20 million grant. The New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, Chronicle Higher Education, and several thousand other news outlets have quoted Dr. Harper and featured his research. He has been interviewed on CNN, ESPN, NBC News, and NPR. He also has testified twice to the United States House of Representatives and spoken at numerous White House meetings. Dr. Harper served as on President Barack Obama's My Brother's Keeper Adversity Council on the National Education Policy Committee for the Biden-Harris campaign and on California Governor Gavin Newsom's statewide, ta uh, statewide task force on education, racial equity, and COVID-19 recovery. The recipient of dozens of top honors in his field and three honorary doctorates. Dr. Harper has been repeatedly recognized in education week as one of the 10 most influential scholars in the field of education. Please give a round of applause as we welcome this fellow Golden Ram on the stage, Dr. Harper. Then take a moment and take it all in. It is so good to be home at the place where it started for me. 
here on the campus of Albany State University. On a technical note, it was called Albany State College when I first started 29 years ago. There are, y'all don't laugh and make fun of the elderly, stop it. <laughs> there are six things I want to do um, as a way of getting us started. First, I want to praise God for this moment. and for each of you. Second, I want to salute Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly, the black man who had the extraordinary vision to create what is now known as Albany State University. Imagine a black man in 1903 having the audacity to envision the grounds that we stand on today. Having the vision to create an educational institution that has produced thousands upon thousands upon thousands of brilliant Americans, the overwhelming majority of them African Americans. Major salute to that visionary black man. Uh, quick fact check, uh, it was 1903, correct? Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right, let me also uh, take a moment to salute and um, thank President Frederick for her extraordinary leadership of my beloved alma mater. I appreciate getting the Facebook post and my alumni newsletters and so on, and just reading about all of the innovations that are occurring here under her leadership. I know for sure that this university continues to be in excellent hands uh, because of President Frederick. so thank you. I also want to thank those who were responsible for bringing me here, Dr. Burgess, Andre Joseph. Uh, thank you both for your amazing partnership over the past several months to make this moment happen. I'd be remiss, you see my mama raised me right, I'd be remiss if I did not also take a moment here, right now, to thank all of those who invested in me when I was a student here, between the years of 1994 and 98. The roster is too long for me to call every name, but I'd be remiss if I didn't call C.W. Grant's name if I didn't call Gwinnetta Trice's name, if I didn't call Dr. Stephanie harris Charlie's name, if I didn't call Dr. Maldeca Wilson's name, Dr. Margaret Banks' name, and all of the other faculty members and staff members and administrators, I'd be remiss if I didn't call Madam President Portia Holmes Shields, the first black woman president of this fine university who came when I was a student here, who nurtured my interest in a career in higher education. All these years later, I remain so grateful to those who poured into me. When I sat in the very seats that you were sitting in, actually, we were across campus. It wasn't exactly these seats. These are slightly nicer seats than the ones we were in, but we were wearing black and white. When I was wearing my black top, my black pants and my white top, uh, and somebody looked out in that audience and they saw me and they saw my classmates and they saw in us what I see in you and they decided to invest. I would be so remiss all these years later if I did not just take a moment to really honor and acknowledge each and every one of those persons who were here at that time. Lastly, I want to congratulate you the class of 2027. Notice I didn't say 28, 29, or 30. I said class of 2027. That is four years from now. 
That is long enough to do what you have come here to do. If you follow the blueprint for student success that has been created here, you will not only graduate in four, five, or six years, but let's go with four, but you will also leave this place so much better than you entered. I know this firsthand. As I noted, it was exactly 29 years ago when I started here as a first year student. It was just weeks after a devastating flood wiped out more than half of the buildings on this campus. But yet, we showed up here and we claim to be unsinkable. And all these years later, that is a term that has endured to characterize the resilience and the resistance of this place. To characterize what it means to enter the Ramali and not be devastated by anything, but instead to overcome collectively as a community anything that Mother Nature or anybody else might throw our way. Salute to those leaders who declared back in July 1994 that this place was unsinkable. It remains that way now 29 years later. Four days ago, a reporter asked me in a televised interview, as we think about college students going back for fall semester, she asked me, what do black students in particular deserve in higher education? I said to her what I'm going to say to you. Every black student, every other student of color, every poor student who comes from a low income background in a single mother, a single parent home like mine, Every one of those students deserves the experience that I was afforded here at Albany State. That is my hope, wish, and vision for every black student who is starting college this fall. It is my hope for each of you, whether you're black, white, Latino, Asian American, Native American, or whatever your race or ethnicity is, it is my hope that you will have the extraordinary experience that became the launching pad for a now Dr. Sean Harper. My hope is that someday somebody will call you Dr. Insert your first and your last name. Someone will call you President. Insert your first and your last name. Right? And that Albany State will gift to you all that it gifted me during the four years that I was here. There are five things that my Albany State University experience taught me. I hope that these will be the same lessons for each and every one of you in the class of 2027. It was here that I learned that I am smart. You see, I grew up in Thomasville, Georgia, just an hour south of here. I went to public schools there. Almost all of my teachers were white. Most of them failed to recognize the genius in a young Sean Harper. In fact, as I look back over some of my old report cards, my mother's kept all those things and I sometimes look over those. I read the comments that my teachers wrote on those report cards. Now I was introduced to you as Sean Harper and the program says Sean Harper, but my government name is Bushon. Year after year after year, those report cards said in the teacher's comments, Vashon talks too much. Now, might it be that you weren't talking about nothing, so Vashon decided that he was going to talk about things 
amongst his friends and, and, and classmates. But I'll declare, all these years later, Vashon gets paid to talk. I know that sounded like a flex. It wasn't quite exactly intended to be a flex. But the point here, right, is that as my white, mostly female teachers attempted to suppress my voice, as they perhaps unintentionally neglected to recognize the genius in a young Bashan, it was here at Albany State, upon arrival on day one, that genius was recognized. It was here that it was nurtured and affirmed. It was here that those professors repeatedly and so consistently told me that I was gifted and smart. Things I had heard for the first time in my life from educators. So I learned here that I'm smart, but I also learned here that black people are smart. Now to be sure, because my mama raised me right, I always believed in black beauty and the richness of black culture. I love black people. But you see, it was here that I had my first time exposure to black Americans with PhDs, with EDDs, with MDs, with master's degrees. It was here that I began to believe that we actually could be anything we wanted to be because I saw it embodied in those incredibly accomplished black professionals. But to be sure, it wasn't just the black people who worked here. It was my black classmates who confirmed for me that black people are brilliant. I had the privilege of learning alongside them in every class I took, leading alongside them in every club, student organization, and in the ASU marching ram show band. These were some of the smartest black people I've ever met in my life. What a gift to come to a place and be reminded on every day, at every turn, that we collectively are brilliant, that we're smart, that we're talented, that we're beautiful. It was also here that I learned that black culture is amazing. Black culture is diverse. There is no such thing as a monolithic version of black culture. You see, each of us comes from a place. Now it might be in the place that you come from, maybe, just maybe, there isn't a ton of diversity among black people. As I think about being born and raised in Thomasville, Georgia, in our low-income neighborhood, there wasn't a ton of diversity in our low-income neighborhood, but it was here at Albany State where there was a convergence of cultures. From right here in Albany, those who came from Albany High, Westover, Monroe, shout out, shout out to the tornadoes, right? Um, those, plus the students from Thomasville, plus the students from Atlanta, plus the students from Sylvester, plus the students from um, all the other places that y'all are from. <laughs> we were from those places. My very first college roommate here at ASU came from Waterbury, Connecticut. It was a convergence of black cultures that came together like an orchestra that made beautiful music. It was here that day after day, my peers and I created a rich, 
black college experience. It was here that I learned that historically black colleges and universities are essential. This one and all of the other HBCUs all across the United States of America are essential. I learned that here. You see, I spent my faculty career teaching at predominantly white universities. At PWIs, black students are longing for black professors. Not at HBCUs. At PWIs, black students are longing for culturally inclusive classrooms, not at HBCUs. At PWIs, black students are longing to see themselves in the curriculum, to read about black history, black people, black contribution, not at HBCUs. It was here at Albany State that I learned that the thing that we take for granted in this place is not the experience that the overwhelming majority of black students have in American higher education. I learned to be grateful for that here. I also learned that the Ramali is real and that it is forever. We are here to induct you into the Ramali. It's real. It's a real network of powerful, incredibly amazing Albany State University alumni. Right? It is a network that will privilege you and that will benefit you for the rest of your lives and your careers. So those are just some of the things that I learned that you, from this day forward, day after day after day, as you walk this yard, as you go into your classrooms, your labs, onto the athletic fields, to your band practice and so on, you too will be gifted those realizations day after day here at Albany State. Now I told you what I learned as a student here long ago. Oh, the class of 2027 is so turned. Uh, I'm here for it. It's give and turn. As I, as I just share with you the wonderful things that I learned those lessons that endure. I hope and wish that those are things for you. But let me also give you five affirmations from me to you. The first is that you belong here and you can do the work. Yeah. You were admitted here because of your academic talent, because of your academic promise, you can do the work and you can succeed here. You can stand here 29 years from now and address the class of, y'all do the math, math majors in the audience, uh, and tell them that they can do the work because you did the work. You can do the work. The second affirmation is that you can have fun while doing it. Academic success and having a good time don't have to be mutually exclusive. You know, I just acknowledged that there was a, a turn up in the, in the audience. You know, back in the day, we used to call it being crunk. It was entirely possible to be a great student from eight to five and to be crunk in the after hours after doing one's homework and studying and all the things, right? My point here is that I want you to savor every second of this four-year experience. Yes, take the academic seriously, but this is college. I want you to have a college experience that is fun. 
Third, you can learn to lead here at Albany State through the dozens of clubs and organizations and honor societies and sororities and fraternities. You can learn to lead by becoming active in the Student Government Association, which is a thing I did very early on in my experience here and ultimately became vice president of the SGA and a year later was elected president of the SGA. It was there that I learned the leadership skills that I rely on every day now in the $36 million enterprise that I lead at the University of Southern California. You can learn to lead here. You see, I was the editor-in-chief of the Student Voice, the undergraduate student newspaper here at Albany State. Major, major, major shout out to Edith Bradley. May she rest in peace who invested so generously into the other student journalists and me. In addition to being a professor and all the things, I'm also a journalist, a leading journalist. In the past 12 months, my Forbes articles have reached nearly a million readers. I learned to lead in journalism here at Albany State. You can learn to lead here in ways that will endure for the rest of your lives and your careers. Take advantage of those student leadership and student engagement and student involvement opportunities. They're really important. Here's my, my last two uh, affirmations for you. You can cultivate lifelong friendships here. Friendships that are meaningful. Friendships that will come to your rescue when you find yourself in a lurch or you find yourself facing insurmountable grief. Friendships that will continue to deliver the fun that you experience as college students into your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and into your hundreds for those of you who live that long. You know, I think about the beautiful friendship that I have with William Weeks, my best college friend, who's from right here in Albany. He's a Monroe High School graduate. I met Weeks here at Albany State. I met Ontario Wooden, who is another lifelong friend of mine here at Albany State. I'm in a group chat with William Weeks and Ontario Wooden. There probably are not four days that go by that we are not in touch with each other. All these years later, you can cultivate friendships here that endure. Lastly, you can become one of the most influential people in your chosen field, profession, or industry. You can learn how to become influential here. You can amass the tools and the skills and the experiences through internships, through research with faculty members, through collaboration with your peers, and so on. You can amass all the experiences that set you up to become influential. What do I mean by influential? I'm a professor in two schools at USC, business and education. There are more than 20,000 professors in schools of education across the United States of America. More than 20,000 of us all across the United States. Each year, Education Week ranks the top 1% of education professors in the country. So it's 200 people on that list. For nine straight years, an Albany State University alumnus has been on that list. This year, that Albany State University alumnus is ranked the fourth most influential professor in the field of education in the United States of America. I am him. Yeah. 
you can be among the most influential people in your chosen fields, professions, and industries. Only two scholars ever in the history of the American Educational Research Association and the Association for the Study of Higher Education. Only two people, two scholars, have ever been elected president of both of those national, incredibly prominent associations. One of those two people is an Albany State alumnus. I am him. Because of his expertise, an Albany State University alumnus has become the go-to guy for expertise on diversity, equity, and inclusion. He is the go-to guy, the guy that the NFL, Nike, T-Mobile, the United States Air Force, Anheuser-Busch, NBC Universal, and more than 400 other companies have gone to. I am him. You see, the ways that Albany State set me up for success, set me up to be influential, set me up to lead, is the vision, the hope, and the prayers that I have for you, class of 2027. I don't want it just for you. I want it for all of the people whose lives you will touch through your work, through your leadership, through your way making. Twelve years ago, <laughs> y'all chill, I I'm almost done, <laughs> chill. Here's the inspirational finale. I know this is running long. When I said 12 years ago, somebody was like, oh, God. All right, no, really. I'm almost done. Y'all are a trip. Twelve years ago. I founded a center when I was a professor at the University of Southern, at the University of Pennsylvania. That center now employs 29 full-time, incredibly well-paid professionals, as well as more than 200 consultants. More than 90% of those people are black. I want to end on that note because I want success for you as individuals. But I also want you to leverage your individual success to make a way for others to have a collective impact on black communities and on communities of color. I want you to be able to amass your wealth, your influence, your stature to disrupt racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia. I want you to use your influence to do something about poverty and suffering. Your four, five or six years here at Albany State will prepare you to make that way for yourself and for so many others. From the bottom of my heart, I congratulate you and welcome you to the Ramblin'. Thank you. Go Rams! One, nine, one, nine, all three!
Remember in your seats. I want to get a shout out to the Royal Court. Give a shout out to our Royal Court, Mr. and Ms. ASU, and they were wonderful. Court. I want to give a shout out to University College. Are you in the house? I want to give a shout out to the athletes and the athletes in the house. Any band members in the house? And Summer Success Academy. All right, thank you. Let's have a great